Hey Ecofictologists, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lovis and yes, I am back. I am back with reading, roundup, wrap up, monthly review, whatever you would like to call it because breaking news, I am reading again. Yay. I have been rather quiet on here and there are a few reasons for that. Life is one. <laughs> the other is that I'm kind of shifting focus. I'm in kind of a stage of flux. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing with my channel right now. I'm figuring it out. Um, I don't want to neglect aspects of it that need my attention. I want to give you what you want. Um, but I'm also writing a lot more, which is great and which I would love to feature more on the channel. So just bear with me while I figure all that out. I know from your comments that you like uh, the book reviews and you like to know what I've been reading. So the reviews will stay. Um, you also like the TBR game, TBR mash that I developed. So that will be back, never fear. It's just the rest of the content that I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm wrestling with, I'm wrestling with it. But this is one of the um, roundup videos. So let's just get to that. Um, I missed the one in August because of <laughs> life. Um, and so this is going to be a combo. This is going to be my favorite reads, well, all my reads, and then identifying my favorite read of both August and September. So I'll pick my favorite from each month and lots of decisions will be made on the leaderboard. So just sit tight, get comfortable, and let's get into it. First up in August, I dove into cozies, into cozy mysteries, which is the genre that I have recently started writing in. And I am just, I'm having the best time. And I actually managed to find two eco-fiction cozies to read in August. The first one is Murder on the Rocks by Karen McInerney. Um, it is the first in the Grey Whale in mystery series. This attracted my attention immediately because it focuses on a small island community where a hotel chain wants to develop one of the beaches to build a resort and um, doing so would disturb the nesting tern population that is there. Um, a tern is a type of seabird for anyone who doesn't know. This of course screamed ecofiction to me birds, endangered birds, and development, and um, habitat loss, and all of these things, and I thought, perfect, this is right up my alley, I am diving into this. The main character, Natalie, runs a B&B right next to where the resort would be built, and she kind of has headed up this little organization of people who is um, opposing the development of the resort to protect the turns. So when the developer ends up dead, of course, Natalie is the prime suspect and um, has to investigate the murder herself to clear her own name. I thought the book was okay. It didn't feel as cozy to me as some of the other cozies that I've read. Yes, there was lots of talk of baking, and yes, it was a small community set on this island, um, but it didn't, it was missing that like warmth, that like hug that you get from cozies. And they didn't really talk about the turns. I found that so frustrating. They just kind of were background. They mentioned them every now and then. They were there in scene descriptions or something, but they didn't really tell you anything about the turns. You didn't really understand why the stakes were so high or, you know, you. It just they just miss this opportunity to teach you something about turns, which maybe that is my like science communication eco fiction nerdery talking, but I found that very frustrating and disappointing. In the end, it was okay. It did get exciting. I was very annoyed with the detective character who was so blinkered into his prime suspect, Natalie, that he blatantly ignored evidence. Um, I'm finding that a really irritating trope in cozy mysteries, which is an issue because it comes up a lot. So it was okay, but I don't think I'll pick up the second in the series. The second cozy mystery eco-fiction novel that I read was called Shady Hollow by Juno Black. It's the first in the Shady Hollow series. And this is probably personal preference whether you think this is eco-fiction or not because <laughs> it is told entirely from the perspective of woodland creatures. It is an anthropomorphic fantasy, if you will. Shady Hollow is a village with a mill run by a beaver and a newspaper run by a skunk and a cafe run by a moose named Joe. And the murder victim is a grumpy old toad who's found stabbed in the pond. 
I mean, really. If you caught my July episode about my reading slump, you know that I had some some issues and um, that Poppy War by R.F. Kuang did me dirty. So what better way to pull me out of a reading slump than finding a <laughs> cozy mystery told from the perspective of woodland creatures? I mean, does it have an ecological message? No, not really. But anthropomorphic fantasy, for me, always toes that line between eco-fiction and just fantasy. So for me, I'm counting it. You don't have to count it. You don't have to agree with me. Again, that is the beauty of eco-fiction. It is exactly what you'd expect. It is lighthearted. It is whimsical. There, like, you, you feel invested, but not so much that there is any stress involved in reading it. So it's a lovely comfort read. It's satisfying. That's all I'll really say about that. <laughs> Looking at the two eco-fiction novels that I read in that month, I did enjoy Shady Hollow more than I did Murder on the Rocks. Even though Murder on the Rocks has the clearer eco-fiction tie or message. So Shady Hollow is my favorite read of the month of August. And it also is the clear winner between that and uh, Poppy War by R.F. Kuang because <laughs> that one's only on the leaderboard because I I had to have something for July. So, Shady Hollow, there it is. Moving swiftly along to my September reads, I was fairly prolific in September, actually, with my reading, considering I was fresh out of a reading slump. And I started off strong, let me tell you. My first book that I read in September was A Murder of Crows by Sarah Yarwood Lovett. Um, the first in the Nell Ward murder mystery series. It is marketed as a cozy mystery slash ecological crime novel, and it is fantastic. I can't even explain how much I love this book. It was the perfect inspiration for my current work in progress because it is a cozy mystery and an ecological crime. It is perfect. The author, uh, Sarah Yarwood Lovett, herself is an ecological consultant. She goes out and she does surveys to make sure that developments and such aren't impacting creatures negatively. And if they are, they, uh, she either blocks the development or uh, moves the creature somewhere else. Similarly, the main character, uh, N Dr. Nell Ward, is an ecologist and does this, goes out for surveys, and she happens to be surveying a particular plot um, at the exact time that a murder takes place. Kuinky dink? Perhaps. What I loved about this book is that you learned so much about bats. The book revolved around bats and you just learned so many like little tidbits and goodies. I, I just, I lapped it up. It was perfect for science communication. I cannot wait for book two. I am fully on board the ecological crime cozy mystery train. So yeah, five stars, great book. I loved it. Moving on. The second book was actually a complete surprise to me. I listened to The Accidental Alchemist um, by Gigi Pandian. Probably not how you say her name, I apologize. Uh, it's the first in the mystery series of the same name. Uh, I listened to it on audiobook because it is a paranormal cozy, and mine is also a paranormal cozy. I thought I'd do some, <laughs> do some market research. I didn't actually expect it to have any ties to eco-fiction whatsoever. But somehow, I think it does. The main character, Zoe, is an alchemist, um, and she has an affinity for plants. She uses her herbalism in, um, in her alchemy. She uh, is vegan. She's very attuned to the natural world around her, the sun and the cycles and, and all the things. And her story kicks off um, when a walking, talking gargoyle jumps out of one of her moving boxes when she's moved into her new house. <laughs> He appears with a mysterious alchemy book, and the next day a man is murdered on her doorstep and the alchemy book is gone. The book follows her as she tries to clear her name, because this, this guy died on her doorstep after apparently burgling her, um, and she also is trying to find the book um, without, you know, telling everybody about gargoyles and, and alchemists. It's a lot of fun. I love the little gargoyle, <laughs> the little French gargoyle who spends his time in the kitchen, like coming up with vegan recipes that sound delicious. <laughs> it's cozy, it's exciting, it's whimsical, it's silly, I like it. And it's funny because I looked up one of the, I looked up some of the reviews on uh, Goodreads and like the top review is a one-star review that picks out 
kind of the the focus on food and recipes as a downside and I'm like did you not know you were reading a cozy <laughs> did was there a miscommunication about genre here <laughs> because that is, is quite an important part of cozies as far as I understand <laughs> so if you don't like cozy mysteries this probably won't be for you <laughs> um, but I do like cozy mysteries so it was for me and I'm very excited to uh, read the second book in the series. It really was the, the affinity for plants and the herbalism and the kind of connection to the natural world that made this eco-fiction adjacent for me, even though the story itself wasn't about anything ecological. And I like the way that the book taught you something about a field of study. Alchemy was the precursor to chemistry, and, um, and you kind of learn some of the symbolism and some of the techniques and the methods whether it's accurate, I have no idea, but you learn as you go along. And so I was kind of taking some notes about how she communicated a lot about this, about this field. So yeah, I enjoyed that very much. That was The Accidental Alchemist by Gigi Pantheon. The other two books that I read in September were not eco-fiction novels, so I won't talk about them here, but I'm allowing myself to read outside of eco-fiction for my own sanity <laughs> and my own research into cozy mysteries, um, but I'm enjoying that very much. And the other book was a beta read for one of my writing group partners, and I, you lucky ducks, you are in for a treat when this hits the shelves, I will tell you now. Obviously I can't tell you any more than that, but... I just wanted to acknowledge it. And of those two that were eco-fiction, A Murder of Crows was my favorite. It was so good. Ugh, I just, yeah. Anyway, enough gushing, I've gushed enough. So that goes in the top spot in September and it really is an easy win for it against Shady Hollow. Shady Hollow was a, a lovely, satisfying read, but A Murder of Crows, I friggin' loved it. So yeah, that is my favorite so far. So that is my reading roundup for August and September. Um, I am now going to be diving into some books that have been sent to me. I know I said that I, I would do that in September, but the beta reads took um, priority. I'm still working on one. Um, and I've been reading a lot of audiobooks or listening to a lot of audiobooks, I should say. Um, I'm not doing very well with print books right now. I don't know why, I can't explain it. But I hope you enjoy that review. If you've read any of these books or would like to now, please let me know in the comments below and um, let me know what you thought about this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I post every Wednesday. Well, hmm. <laughs> I usually post every Wednesday. October might be a little <laughs> in flux refer to the beginning of the video <laughs> but um when i do post i post all about reading and writing ecofiction and how it can be used as a science communication tool so if that sounds interesting then stick around and please do come and join us on our discord server rewilding our stories um we have wonderful conversations there we share resources we make collaborations we have a book club it's great and everyone is welcome so invite link for that is also in the description below and that is all from me, so happy reading, and I will see you next week, Eco-Fictologists.